All right, so um, today I'm going to show you how to make a new branch off of Master and go through basically making a new feature for the app. So uh, it actually won't be a real new feature, but it will be how you would make a real new feature. So um, down here you can see um, in Android Studio I have already set up all of the uh, connection as far as... Um, getting to the remote branch and all that stuff. So you can see all the remote branches we have currently. If we want to create a new one, um, we should always be creating it off of master unless we have some specific reason not to. Uh, master should be the most up-to-date um, that's all been put together, that's all been merged together and, and things of that nature. So create a new local branch. We'll call it testing and we'll hit OK. All right, so you can see down here that the Git has changed to testing. So we now have a new local branch. Um, and you can see that it's checked out uh, down here in the bottom left. It says checked out from origin slash master. So it is the remote master, not your local one. Always make sure that you're pulling from the remote um, because that will be the most up-to-date one. Uh, that's already been merged together and so on and so forth. So let's say that we wanted to add some spaces in our manifest file and we see the file goes blue, so it's got to change. Um, and we can do a commit, uh, commit change. So added spaces. Okay, now this is the key part. When you commit and push, it's going to ask you and this is really, really important. Push current branch to an alternative branch. You'll see right now it's set to master. If I leave it as master, it will overwrite master. And that's not how you want to push. You want to push to something custom. So you choose push current branch to alternative branch. And then you can name it the same thing that you've already named your local one. So in this case, testing. And then we hit push and it'll create a new remote branch and push these changes up to it. Now, if we go into GitLab, let's see here if we have that. Yeah, gotta sign in. And this could be any um, Git hosting that you could be using. Um, let's see if I remember my password. And apparently I do. So, um, right away in, in my um, uh, activity feed here or whatever, you can see that I've pushed a new testing branch. And if I want to get this code into master, we have to do what's called um, a merge request. And so this is true for... Um, any code that you were to try to get into master, this is the best way to go about it, is creating a merge request. So we click that button, and that's really handy because it's already set up our from and our to, or into in this case. And so you can see that it's going to take changes that happened from our testing and put them into master. Um, you could name it whatever you want, and you can assign it to people and all this good stuff. So you could do whatever there. You can set it with a milestone if you're keeping track or labels. And then down here, you'll see what the differences are. So this difference right here are is the three spaces that I inserted. That difference is from master. And the reason that difference is from master is because... Uh, two reasons. A, we created this branch from master, so that was the original code. And the real reason is because that is what we're comparing it to when we're doing the into. So we have testing and it's and it's trying to put it into master. And so it goes through and compares all the code and this is the only difference it could find. And the reason this is the only difference is because we made it from master. So if I actually wanted to get this code in there, I would hit submit merge request and then someone else can review the changes or yourself, it wouldn't matter. Uh, you can review the changes that looks very similar to this diff down here and then you can accept those changes. And that is the best way to get code um, from a feature branch into master.